Well, hello everyone. My name is Amy, the Zig Penated Woman, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today, I'm starting off a new little vlog series. I thought this would be fun. I like watching videos like these, so I thought, why not make some? I'm sorry, my cats are attacking each other in the background. Will you behave? So, um, <laughs> in these vlogs, kind of like um, Books and Lala does, where she does, uh, she gives the authors like third times a charm. This is not necessarily going to be like that. Some of these authors I've read two from, some I've read more. It's going to be, basically these authors are on my chopping block. If I don't like one more of their books, I'm going to stop reading them. So the, the two authors that I'm going to do in this vlog are Peter Swanson and Lucy Foley. It's in me here. I didn't realize I had so much to say about these books. So I ended up talking way too much to make this one vlog so i'm going to split this into two so i will be talking about the peter swanson book in here and i'll be speaking about the lucy foley book excuse that noise in the next one because i talk too much <laughs> enjoy and also spoilers ahead by the way lots of spoilers but uh i will tell you more about what i feel about lucy foley later <laughs> but i'm going to start off this vlog by reading a peter swanson um, now, first of all, I'm sorry about this backdrop. <laughs> if it looks weird or empty, I moved in two days ago uh, and I have been listening to a lot of audiobooks. That's why this particular video is very per pertinent. Um, so, yeah, uh, as the video goes on, maybe you'll see the background change a little bit. So, Peter Swanson, I heard a lot of hype about his book, Eight Perfect Murders, which came out, was it last year? Look at my book book. Yes, last year. Um, and it had a really cool premise, eight murders that are based off the murders in some murder novels, like uh, thriller novels. Um, and I thought, oh, that's a cool premise. It's like gimmicky, but it's like just gimmicky enough. I kind of like a gimmicky mystery or a gimmicky thriller in a way, like in an Agatha Christie kind of nostalgia kind of way. Um, so I thought that would be cool because, I mean, Agatha Christie was in it. Um, and I just thought it was really disappointing. Um, in my little review that I write in my little book book, um, I said, disappointing, I feel it should have been double the length and really got into some of the complexities it brought up. And I would agree with that. It, it just ended up being incredibly uh, like rushed and they didn't really flesh things out very well and they didn't utilize the medium of playing off of these different stories that they you know like he had such good source material to work with and I feel like he really didn't do well and I didn't end up caring about those characters in the slightest didn't give a shit what happened to them like I even lost track of who was who and there weren't that many characters so yeah it was just disappointing so then I read Her Every Fear and I've got to tell you when I cannot remember this book's name it keeps falling out of my head lucky I write my books down I have story graph <laughs> so I can keep track of what I read because I couldn't for the life of you tell you anything about this book until I read a synopsis which shows shows you something about the, the book itself it was very forgettable very dull and in my book book I wrote a gem a gem of a review so frustrating and dull and full of plot holes and then I've drawn a little character and I've labeled it who so that's how I feel about that book um, I read through the synopsis, I vaguely remember it now. It was just really contrived, very convenient, and I hate when I hate when things are too convenient in a in a thriller. Like put in a little bit of like oh, this it was this all along. Dun, dun, dun. You know, that's that's great, but there's certain ways that I can suspend my disbelief in certain ways that I can't, and this book was one of the ones that I couldn't I couldn't get past. <laughs> um the convenience aspect we will also talk about later on when I talk about Lucy Foley. Um, so for now, I'm going to read every value break. Hi, it's me editing Amy, I'm back. Um, I realized I completely, I, I told you the two bad reviews about these Peter Swanson books and didn't actually tell you the one good one. <laughs> I completely forgot about it that made me want to read him again. So that was a kind worth killing. I think it's one of his earlier ones. It's also based off Patricia Highsmith a little bit, which uh, also Strangers on a Train, again, like Eight Perfect Murders, which was a bit odd. Um, but it was really well done. It had multiple voices. Their voices were very distinct. It had twisty turnies all over the place and like ones that I completely didn't see coming, but in the best way, not in a, 
well, that was dumb kind of way. Like it was really freaking well written. So that's why I wanted to give him one more chance because I was like, okay, I haven't liked two, but I really liked the kind with killing. So let's give this one a go. So now I'm going to go to read every value break. I know it has something to do with a wife who is, who has an affair or like has a one night stand on her bachelorette party. Then they go to this deserted island or go to this like remote island for their uh, honeymoon and this man has followed them. That's all I've heard from other people talking about it. Um, I haven't heard good things about this book. <laughs> oh no. But uh, we will see how it goes. This whole first scene is Abigail, our main protagonist, seeing the guy that she slept with on her hen night, on her bachelorette party. Um, and then now she's flashing back to when she met him and the conversation they had and he asked her directly like first time meeting her how many people she'd had sex with and she told him and now they've gone through a, she's gone through a story of every single person she's ever fucked why <laughs> is this pertinent to the story <laughs> i'm confused ew the guy who she's marrying said that he, she has become his reason for being. Ew, and they've only just met. Red flag, red flag. Also, look. Ooh. For a only like seven hour audiobook, this preamble is very long. Um, like we're still not at the wedding yet. And I feel like I've been listening for uh, for a while. I don't have internet here, so the only thing I have to entertain me is listening to audiobooks. <laughs> um, so that's what I've been doing. And yeah, it's just like your standard domestic thriller preamble. Um, rip my audio. But one of the things that I have noticed is that, first of all, Peter Swanson mostly write from a woman's perspective which I find very weird for a man I like own voices writing to, you know to an extent I mean obviously you can't always do that but you know it's preferable um, and his women are always unlikable and I do like an unlikable main character so that's not a necessarily a negative it's just a cliche that he uses very often um, so they're always like yeah unreliable bit of a bitch and they make bad decisions when they drink. That's like a domestic sort of like staple, you know. So, yeah, anyway. So far, so fine. Okay, I'm busy making dinner. So we finally got to the point where they are on their honeymoon and he has taken her on this really strange honeymoon. Okay, this is gonna be spoilers, okay? So he's taken her on this honeymoon to this place where there's like very little elect electricity, so it's like, bougie rough in it and it's like set in this like old um, summer camp which is really creepy <laughs> but you know you can order like the fanciest champagne and they will find a way to bring it to you even though you have to go on a tiny airplane to get to this place and the guy comes up to her and it's the guy that she'd slept with when she was on her honeymoon on her honeymoon bachelorette party and uh, he said that he didn't believe her when she said that he uh, she, that she wasn't interested in him because he emailed because he had emailed her, but she didn't know how he got hold of that email. I wonder if they're gonna explore that. Um, but basically, he's one of those guys who can't take no for an answer, which is really creepy. So I think it might show the dangers of that kind of behavior, which would be interesting. But yeah, that, that's what's happening so far. I am currently making a spinach and tomato sauce with a ton of garlic and then pasta and feta. Mm -mm -mm. Um, I did more decorating. Look at that suds it. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, it's looking quite cute. Tomorrow I'm going to do the shelves. Sure. That's going to be in another book. Oh, God. So this book has just done one of my 
least favorite tropes, and that is the lunatic trope. Even using the term lunatic is so dated, but this one does. And she literally, like, the guy is under the illusion that they were in love and they had a connection. And he's, like, irrational. And he's, like, she, she talks about how he's, like, sweating even though the, the day is not hot and things like that. So he's obviously mentally ill and he's the bad guy. Which I hate. But, yeah, we'll see how we go. It's not very thrilling, to be honest really not very thrilling um it's just sort of like will her husband find out or not but i'm not even convinced of that relationship at all she talks a lot about his money and i think there's some moments where they're trying to sort of fake the connection that this couple has but it's so surface level you don't get really like too much like you don't get the depth of their relationship so you're not like really invested yeah, a little bit surface level so far. Um, but I'm going to carry on reading tonight because I've got no YouTube or anything to entertain me. Uh, and I'll update you tomorrow. Hello everyone. So I'm just putting my shoes on. So I'm going to chat to you about Every Value Break. So we've sort of got another sort of uh, storyline happening. So let's make a character's name. This happens especially in in <laughs> books like this. I totally forget their names. Anyway, our protagonist has met this other woman. She's like the only other guest that is a woman at this camp. Um, they're all men, which is creepy to begin with. Um, and they also, like, it's a lot of a corporate retreat type of people. So it's very, very lonely. Lots of really rich people. Um... So she meets this other woman, like the only other uh, honeymooning couple. And the woman says that her ex-boyfriend is there. So we've got like this parallel between the one night stand coming to the island and another ex-boyfriend coming to the island. Then in the middle of the night, she sees this woman, um, the other honeymooner, and she's in her nightgown and she's covered in blood. She runs off into the forest and she loses track of her. She tries to get hold of like the people who run the camp and everything. They said they can't find her. And they said that woman left earlier in the day in a plane. Because you can only get to this island by plane. But then, so no one really believes her. Everyone thinks she's had a dream. Um, but then the one night stand guy comes out, Scott, and says, oh, I saw her. So even though she makes him like walk further away from her, she sort of starts listening to him. She's gone from like lunatic to, oh, this guy might actually know what's going on and might be sympathizing with me, which I think is a, a very big departure and very unexpected. But I suppose if she thinks that nobody else around her is listening, then I suppose it makes sense. But yeah, I'm still... Even with that event happening, it's still not very thrilling. It's sort of just like a uh, ominous feeling, I suppose, which is which is good for a thriller. I, I feel like there's something we're going to learn about this island and this resort that's on this island. But I think that will be a huge factor in whether I think this is actually decent or not. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say now. Pete. Can I call you Pete? I'm sorry, we can't see each other anymore. <laughs> oh God, I just finished every value break. Yo, there's one thing about me not having internet is that I'm going through books like, I'm gonna be so far ahead of my freaking goal, uh, my story graph goal, which is ridiculous, but <sighs> this book was really dumb. <laughs> Obviously, this is just my opinion. This is like what I, um, like my sort of taste in a thriller. But to me, this would be like a really cheesy thriller movie that like when I was straight, when I was <laughs> a guy that I would be dating would pick this as the movie, you know, and he would be totally into the ridiculous over the top action 
and I'd be like, really? <laughs> this acting is wooden and the dialogue is terrible. Um, it basically ended up being this like men's rights cult that shamed women <laughs> who were, um, uh, la, 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 that, that uh, committed like infidelity. But the thing is, it's like, <laughs> like they would test, test their women. So like the husband and the one night stand were part of the same men's rights organization that were like working together to test her to see whether she's a worthy woman or whatever ends up with this whole freaking sequence of her getting away from the bad guys her witnessing a murder um them holding her trial for her for being a, a slat or something and the whole time she's blaming other people even though she did do the thing like she, she didn't deserve any of that but like there's so much of the time where she makes excuses for the fact that she actually slept with him and like Come now. <laughs> but yeah, she ended up murdering her husband and kayaking across the sea to get to land. And then, yeah, people were arrested and stuff. It was really dumb. It was really dumb. If you did like the style of video, please give me a thumbs up, maybe a comment. Let me know, because I quite liked this. It was nice ranting along <laughs> um, as, I, as I read. So... Um, yeah, let me know if you enjoyed it. Give me a like, subscribe, tickle my bell, and I'll check you next time.